In this, the first of several geometric sections in chapter six, we are going to discuss finding the volumes of special three-dimensional objects called solids of revolution. So let's start by defining these solids of revolution. Solids of revolution are defined in terms of two things. To start with, we need a curve on a closed interval. And then we need a straight line that does not intersect the curve. And this line is called the axis of revolution. And in this class, we'll assume that these axes axes are either vertical or horizontal. So what's a solid of revolution? The easiest way to think about this might be in physical terms. Visualize this curve as being a physical object, a bent piece of wire that we could pick up or move around. And likewise, imagine this axis of revolution as being a physical object. And let's attach this curve to this axis with another piece of wire there and a piece of wire there. And here, and here, we'll put a hinge. So we can take this curve and we can lift it up and rotate it around. The hinges allow us to do that. But this length is fixed, and this length is fixed. So as we rotate the curve, its distance from this axis is not changing. And if we take this curve and rotate it 360 degrees, we'll wind up right back where we started. The figure that this curve traces out in the air is called a solid 
of revolution. So a simple example, but one will have cause to use down the line. If we have a horizontal axis and our curve is a horizontal line segment and we take this curve and we rotate it around the axis to create a solid of revolution, the figure that results from this will be a cylinder. And now that we have this idea down, we can ask questions like, if we have a formula for this curve, can we find the volume of this object or the surface area of this object? We'll start with volume in this section.